Yes, if you guys can clap for me. Okay, you ready? Tell us what it was about skateboarding that you loved and what drew you to it. And what kept you going, even though you ended up in Minnesota where it maybe wasn't as fun or easy or you're dealing with the weather or there's not as many skateboarders? What did I love about skateboarding was the freedom. Um, I mean, I was already pretty free as a kid. Like I was able to do whatever I wanted, sort of say, but with skateboarding, we would like, we would skate for miles in any direction all the time. Just no destination at all. We would just skate in any direction and we would find skate spots on skate spots. We didn't film back then. I don't even think there was like mobile phones with cameras that, that we carried around, but it was just, uh, I had a group of friends that skated too. So we got to, we got to do the same thing, just skate for miles all day, all night. And I don't want to say my home life was something I was running away from, but I preferred not to be at home. <laughs> what was going on there? Uh, just a lot of turbulence with, you know, my parents trying to figure life out too. So. I'd like to understand the process of you discovering you were a woman. How did that start to manifest itself, like the thoughts or the experiences, you know? I remember watching Brian Anderson's um, epically, his vice special about coming out of the closet, and he said when he was a little kid, he was attracted to one of the male characters on Popeye. <laughs> and, and like he even knew he was gay from like being really young, you know? I think it was similar to that. There was like, there was things I did as a child that I maybe even still haven't made sen sense of. But to me, it was like, it was something I had to hide because it was, it was also abnormal to me. I, I felt, I felt ashamed for the things that I would do, I would like, I would dress up as a kid and um, there's a time I painted my nails and my father saw it and he was just furious. And that's pretty much when like my exploration ceased at home. Um, but I didn't really, I didn't really have any thoughts that this would lead me to being a female because I didn't, I was never able to explore it. So to me, it was just something odd that I've always done until I had the opportunity to explore, and then it came quickly. So in essence, as a child, you were just dressing up like a woman or emulating women in a, in a fashion sense, let's say. Yeah, and I mean, I've, I think I've always walked like a, a close line to that too. Like uh, I've explained before that um, one of my favorite uh, clothes to wear was crew. I don't know if you remember the, the brand crew. They had all sorts of super slim fit. That was the thing back then, super skinny jeans. So I had the super slims and all corduroys, like purple, burgundy, and like all these crazy cool colors. And I would wear that stuff. And so like tight clothing was always my jam. <laughs> Not that that means anything, like anyone can wear tight pants, but it was, yeah. So what was your dad's actual reaction? I mean, you said he was furious. But yeah. You know, I'm sure this is something a lot of people like you will relate will relate to when they, yeah. when they hear. Um, so I must have been like fudge, like three or four, maybe five, younger. Um, and it was it was like I painted my nails and I crawled in bed with him. Like I I used to sleep in the same bed as my parents, and he saw that and it was just like, don't ever do that again like you're you're a boy like you don't do that kind of deal like it's just any it's what you'd expect from I, like a hispanic old old school culture parent yeah did he talk to your mom about it as well at that point i don't remember like it i'm was, wondering if you heard anything from your mom about it around that time really i just i remember the event as as that like traumatic negation of it like do not do it that's it <laughs> did you like how did you feel internally like at that moment but then maybe even after like did you you know were you crying were you hurt like I don't I don't think so I just I just knew it was something I could never I, I mean I had to hide I, so from that moment I pretty much I don't think I remembered 
thinking that I had to hide anything about myself until that moment. So I think it was then when I began hiding things from my parents, which sucks, but. Talk about the hiding and what and how you were hiding, essentially. Rob. <laughs> oh, fuck, Rob. <laughs> okay, okay. I mean, what, with whatever you're yeah, comfortable with. Yeah, I mean. okay. Um, I wasn't good at hiding, <laughs> but I've never been caught doing anything, so it was like, it's funny. But actually, my brother, my brother caught me once, also in the same like timeline of when my dad got furious about the nails. He caught me like trying on my mother's robe in the bathroom and like her slippers or something. I was just like, <laughs> but uh, no, I was, I was never good at hiding. I would, I would just like do it randomly. Like they'd be sleeping or something and I'd go throw on some clothes and just like look at myself and be like, oh, this is pretty, you know? Like I liked, I liked being, and I still do, I love being pretty and cute. So like that's that's kind of what I that's what I did. I just put on any pretty cute thing that was laying around. I don't know if I'm going to word this right. Um, there were times where, as a little kid, I probably threw on my mom's robe or shoes and like walked around the house, maybe just being silly, right? Um, not because I felt like I was a female, but my parents, who if they thought I was serious, probably would have reacted the same way as your dad did. But do you think there was a behavior you were exhibiting that made them think it was more than just a kid trying on his mom's clothes? Because like, uh, I'm interested to know how they knew, you know, that it might be, um, well, in their eyes, like a problem or something, you know, like, like what made it, what do you think made it seem like more than just a kid being silly and um, a kid who was a boy who was actually maybe interested in in exploring uh, that he's a woman. I don't I don't think they ever figured that out. Um, I don't think anyone ever figured it out. I mean, when I finally came out, that was one of their arguments. Like, no, you're not. Like, you've always been the manliest, and you've always had like the prettiest girlfriends and all this stuff. And I'm just like, yeah, I mean. It's just something that's been in the back of my mind, but I've, I've, I guess I could have, I felt the same way, you know, like I didn't, I didn't know that I could even be a female if I wanted to. It was just, it was, I guess, it was like something I envied. I envied females when I was a kid. I would envy their dress choice, their, their like ability to be pretty and cute and do things like that. <laughs> Um, I'm really curious and fascinated about all this because there was, this isn't a question, but I'm just sharing with you. There was an era of my life where I thought I was gay. So there was like a definite like exploration process, not physically, I never acted it out with a man, but I, I questioned a lot of things for like probably late high school, all through college and grad school where I like really wasn't sure. And I even like was socializing with gay men there must be a point where you decide, I'm gonna take this to the next step. Like, how does your how does your acknowledgement of your femininity and that you're a woman start to accelerate or or come out more? Like I said, I was never really able to explore that as a child. I didn't get to this until I was older. I th it was last year. I was 27. It was only because my wife at the time decided to to let me explore it when I came out to her. She was the first one I came out to. It was a lifetime of just guilt and what might have turned into like a lot of regret too from the things that I've done. And, uh, and it kind of just summed up to, I have to, I have to, I have to bring this to light for myself or I'm just gonna, I'm gonna become some kind of regret or something like as a whole, like, so you got married. <laughs> Talk to us about your feelings exploring these traditional heterosexual relationship into a marriage. Like, you know, did you feel uh, like you were doing the wrong thing or was it the, the right thing? Or did you know you were doing the wrong thing, but you did it anyway? Did you feel like you were maybe 
potentially going to hurt your wife, you know. I never really summed it up to myself whether I was female or not. Um, so I, I've always participated in relationships as a pretty much a straight man, um, sort of. <laughs> I, had a, I had a small moment of experimentation when I was younger. But uh, yeah, so I just kind of continued as a straight male through life. Um, again, I, besides the fact that society is already kind of, um, you know, suppressing abnormal things, um, I, my parents and the environments I was, I was in didn't really allow for me to explore that either. From Minnesota is when I joined the military and just uh, just before joining the military, I had, I had met my wife and uh, we, uh, we got pregnant. So she, she got pregnant. So as soon as I was joining the military, it was like, it was just a quick roller coaster from there. It was like pregnancy, military, and then we're moving to another state. And uh, it was just a lot. So it was, uh, again, already not, have, like, not having considered whether I was female or not. It was kind of just something that was put in the back burner and I just continued on with this like feeling of guilt and still like participating with myself in those events and then just kind of hiding it away. And uh, that was pretty much it. So I was four years in the military until uh, I got out of the military and it was, it was about a, it was like half, half a year before things really amplified and I had to bring it to light. So. so how did that go? Like, How do you come out to your wife about that and what's her reaction and what is your guys' status now? So it began, it began with me. Um, I had to, I had to come out to myself and that's, that's kind of where all of that, uh, say, concluded, all that guilt and regret. Um, I had to, I had to try to justify it to myself. Like, what is it that I've, I've been doing? What am I thinking? Who am I? What am I? Like, um, it was, it was tough. It was a tough justification, you know, like, like I'm sure telling your parents or telling anybody, it, it felt the same to me. Like I had to tell myself. Um, so that was, that was really hard. And then it, it definitely took some time after that before I could tell anyone else, but I, I just knew I had to do it. I was already married. At this point, we had two kids and one in the oven. <laughs> so it was like, none of it made sense. Obviously, it was just like, man, what is going on? Like, I'm living with all this like guilt and fear and, and and it was taking me, it was taking me to a cliff, you know, so I had to, I had to, I didn't see any other option and, and I, I did. And it was, it was, it was relieving. It was, it was freeing. And she was, she was incredibly supportive. Um, she was almost excited, you know, and, and it, it really, it, like I said, it was freeing. So I, completely expressed myself from there and uh, and it was all a process of exploration from there and and um, I'm not done you know it's only been it's only been a year and I'm I'm as me as I can be today and tomorrow I'll be a little more me but uh, <laughs> how did the marriage proceed after that at first it was all just excitement you know it was something new um, and there wasn't any negativity. I was definitely being affected by the way I was uh, just hiding everything, keeping everything inside, you know? So, um, I mean, I'm not gonna 100% blame, you know, the, the hiding for like any sort of temper or anger that, that might've, you know, shrouded me in those times, but being able to be free and like, not be ashamed and not feel guilt and all that like it was it made me so happy like it, it was it was an enlightenment to me like I was able to to breathe you know and and I was just happy and everything at home was great and everyone was like excited 
and then it kind of I, I guess it kind of started it kind of started setting in like okay this is life now this is the new life you know this is how we are and uh, we just we had a lot of road bumps I guess um, just trying to get through the culture shock of it and uh, mistakes were made and we're divorced now so talk about coming out to your family it started with my wife I came out to her um, again happy excited supportive and then maybe a week later it was like okay we should tell the kids my kids are six four and one so it's like their like awareness of things is limited obviously like they're not conscious of a lot of things like obviously they don't even know vocabulary like society what is society to a child so <clears throat> it was like i wonder how much of this are the how much of this are they going to understand you know how are they going to feel um it was a little scary but i knew they would they would be accepting and they were the it was it must have been like right before bedtime like we do this story time thing and and I told them you know like I I feel like a female I am a female I've always felt this um, and now I understand that I am kind of deal and and it was like I mean to me it was everything it was like this is me telling you I'm your your father is actually uh, your mother and he is actually a she and female and but to them I, I don't know how it clicked to them you know <laughs> but it, it it wasn't it didn't take them long at all it took them maybe days <laughs> not even weeks to to just be like hi mom oh she's pretty oh cute you know and and that's all it is now it's like mom she cute pretty and they love my nails and they love my hair and my outfit they're all very supportive and we're I say this because we're, we're co-parenting so we're still living together my ex-wife at the moment um, and everything everything's good you know like there was no there was no like oh I got to get away from you kind of deal or like uh, I don't know when you think of divorce stereotypically you think of it being like this shipwreck kind of deal it, I mean it was definitely very, it still is very emotional but we're we're very civil at home. So how about coming out to your parents and I don't know if you have siblings or grandparents or aunt, who you, your family like you know. Um, so how they reacted as opposed to like how I was affected by it. <laughs> Shoot no. Um, it, it wasn't good. <laughs> My parents are just like not, I mean, they're just, I hate blaming it on, on the culture, you know, but we're, they're old school. They were, they grew up differently. We're from Guatemala. Um, they were both born in Guatemala and immigrated here. Um, I just don't know. They, they can't make sense of it still. Um, they're kind of just in denial and refusing to, I guess respect any boundaries that I set. That's how my parents are reacting for now. Um, maybe even a little aggression <laughs> in there. My brothers, they're they're very supportive. Brothers is that's all I have. S siblings, uh, three brothers other than myself. They're kind of just in denial, but they're they're very happy for me. Are you trying to? be close to your parents still and, and maybe get them to eventually understand you so that you can be a family again? Or is it better and easier for you to just accept it and walk away for now? I never really had a close relationship with my parents, um, at least on my side. You know, they, they, they tell me these things and they're, you know, they tell me about how supportive they've been and such, but that's that's their truth. You know, I can't take that from them. Um, but I've, I've never really felt that from them. So when I came out to them and their initial reaction, 
it was kind of just like I was, I was patient. I was hoping that maybe they'd understand, you know, and, and I would still try to keep up with them and try to bring up the subject of it. And uh, it, it didn't turn out well, you know, like I said, there was, there's aggression in it. So, I mean, I, I, I'm not, I'm not one to run away from aggression. Like I'm okay with, you know, a fight, if there has to be a fight kind of deal, argumentative sort of sense. Like I'd rather not physically fight anybody, but um, it, got, it got difficult for me to, to want to do anything. I mean, I've, I'm 28. I have three kids. I was married and I did my time in the military and I've still, I own a company and like, I just feel like I had too many responsibilities and too many things going on to be worried about what my parents think of me. And uh, honestly, that, that was probably one of the toughest, uh, one of the toughest obstacles to have to get through because I mean, worldwide, it's, it's like respect your parents, you know, love your mom. All these good like mama songs that are out by Tupac, Tech 9 and stuff, you know. And, Parents are great and supportive, and it's just not what I had, so. Did your dad get physical with you? Like when you, when all this came about? Yeah, he did. Stay here, please. Yo necesito que vayas a chingar a tu puta madre. Yo no necesito que muevas. Yo necesito que vayas a chingar a tu puta madre. Ella... Ya no te quiero. Bien, sal, chico. sal de mi puta vida. Sal de mi puta vida. Te voy a sacar de ahí con tu puta madre. Cálmate. Te voy a sacar. Cálmate. ¿Por qué? ¿Ah? Porque, porque yo... soy Joto. Porque quiero. Ay, ay, yo no puedo mover eso porque soy mujer chinga a tu puta madre. Wow. I want to switch gears a little. Talk to us about <clears throat> your actual physical transition. Like, you know, it starts with dressing and makeup and nails. And then um, you mentioned that you were on hormones and stuff. So for people who don't understand, and I know a lot of trans people probably have all different ways they're going about it. There's a million different combinations, right? Mm -hmm. So can you, can you tell us? Of what your transition entails, like yeah. you know, physically? I've decided that, again, I like being pretty and cute. So everything that goes with that is female. Like, I love female bodies. Um, I think it's a work of art, obviously. Like, I used to draw myself, and I would draw female faces. That was my thing. I want to try to fit that image the best I can. I know that I'll never be a woman, because women are miraculous, you know? they have babies and create life and do all that awesome stuff. I'll, I'll never have that ability, but I'm, I feel like I'm a woman. I would have, I guess I would have wished to be born one. Um, so I'll try, to, I'll try to fill that image as much as I can for myself. And that pretty much involves being as cute as I can be. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, nails, nails done, hair done, <laughs> makeup, and uh, hormones just kind of helps me fill out my clothes better. Um, hormones are what decide where our fat is stored in our body. So obviously men and women store fat in different places. Hormones is going to allow me to start filling in my female curvatures. Yeah. And, the, and does it affect like hair growth and obviously testosterone we were talking about before. I don't think it makes my hair grow faster. It just, it stops hair growth in certain places like facial hair and such. And um, yeah, I mean, just naturally the chemicals in your body start readjusting and such. When you were little, who are your female crushes? Ooh, Mila Jovovich. Mila Jovovich, when I was a kid, I watched, uh, what was that movie with her and Bruce Willis? Fifth Element. Yeah. Something about her and like her red hair and she had this like white suit. It's, she was so beautiful. She was, I mean, she was literally like, she was some sort of 
sage or god in that movie or something and I totally fell for it you know like I followed her forever after that through like Resident Evil series and all of that <laughs> Yeah. yeah. I was like that with Drew Barrymore when I was young. Like, <laughs> she was like my crush forever, you know? Um, so, okay. Um, talk to us then about the transition. Like what, what, what would be the process physically and your eventual goals? And like you said, if you need to talk, if you need to intertwine the Olympics with that. Patience. Patience has been my thing where like, I'm not in a hurry to get anywhere as far as my transition. Um, Again, we, we talk about like the pads, there are two transitioning. Um, these friends I have that, that are already transitioned, they haven't done any hormones. Um, they, just, they just know that a transition is like, a, I think I explained it as an enlightenment. It's this realization and like this finally, this like arrival to, to, to yourself, sort of say. Um, so patience has always been my thing. Like when I got here, I, I was immediately happy and I don't have to go anywhere else. Like I could be here and I could stay here forever. Um, but the fact that I have the ability to, to do more if I'd like is, is something that I've taken upon myself. I, I've began hormones and that's kind of a, for now the, the extent of which my transition goes is to hormones. And I planned on doing hormones as, as long as I could. You know, it's, uh, it's a bit dangerous, uh, especially as I'm 28. There's like health factors that goes into doing hormones and such. Um, what, are, what are those? If you could just give us a couple. Yeah, so when you're, when you're doing hormones, you're taking testosterone blockers, in my case, testosterone blockers and estrogen and that does something to increase your chances of getting strokes, heart attacks and blood clots and such, um, which isn't, isn't a huge concern for me. Like I'm not, you know, afraid of getting, having that happen to me, but it's, it's relevant and it's possible. Um, so the way I've seen it is be patient. You know, my doctor has asked me how I feel and if I'd like to step up my dosage or like go anywhere else other than what I'm doing. And I'm kind of just like, no, I'm, I'm content. I'm seeing small changes uh, day by day. And I like, I look at myself sometimes and I'm just like, oh my fucking God, I'm changing so much right now. <laughs> and I like kind of get giddy about it. So I'm like really happy with where I am. And it really wasn't until this like whole Olympic standard thing that I had to reconsider where I was going with it all. Um, again, my initial reaction to hearing what the standards were, were, okay, I got it. Like, it's not a problem. Like, I'm in, yeah. <laughs> like, it was excitement. I was like, oh my God, I'm in. <laughs> but uh, come to find out, I'm like 290 units off. <laughs> so that sounds massive. So um, just having some further conversation with my doctor and, and finding the, Uh, it's just not going to be, it's not going to be easy to, to do that. Um, besides not being easy, it's, it sounds like it would be, it would compromise my health very much to, to do that. Um, it, it would be a requirement for, for me to, to, to have surgeries, to, to begin modifying my, my genitalia and such. And even then I'd still I still have to put a lot of effort, and by effort I mean just like increase my medications and such to try to meet this standard. So I'm really just hopeful that that's going to change, is, is that, that that 10 unit policy is going to change because I just, don't, I just don't see how that's possible. You know, you're asking this human being to you're, you're asking them to like mutilate themselves. And then you're asking a professional athlete to compromise their health by, by trying to reach this like uh, unobtainable level, a uh, low level of testosterone. I, I really, I, it scares me to think of what, what I might have to go through health wise to, to get there. 
but it's, it's something I've only recently considered because of this. When you say considered, do you just mean thought about, or do you mean you might want to continue the journey to try to be a part of the Olympics? I definitely want to continue the journey to be a part of it in a sense where where I want to, I'm not an activist, you know, I might not even be very motivational, <laughs> but I, I want to try to change. I want to try to change it, you know, like I, I want to do what I can to, to maybe, to, to have these things be reconsidered. Because of that fact, I feel like that's a strong point, is you, you can't ask an elite professional athlete to, to compromise their health like that. Um, besides the fact that I've explained transitioning as a sense of enlightenment has nothing to do with, you know, your testosterone level or what genitalia is you, you have or you were born with. It's just a matter of decision and feelings like you, you felt this way and you finally decided to, to be you, to, to do that. I remember when the open qualifiers began, um, you were DMing USA Skateboarding on Instagram, asking the questions. You even sent an email in and I was the one who got it. Um, and we were writing back and forth and there was all this confusion and ambiguity. And I remember just being like, just post your video anyway. And like, let's, you know, we'll find out the rules later, but just enter, you know? I was really excited to be talking to you and to have you trying and entering. and. I remember as I was saying those words, I was also like, oh my God, is this gonna be devastating if this run doesn't count, you know? I felt like I was encouraging someone to do something that they might get rejected for, you know? Which <laughs> ended up happening, obviously, but how did you feel internally when you found out you were disqualified? I wasn't offended. I kind of expected it. Like, yeah, this, this isn't gonna happen. Like, yeah, I mean, like, I was completely, at static, like I was flying around the place, like, yo, I'm in this competition, I did this run, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, and and then I was disqualified, and I, I guess I just, I felt stupid, because I, I was so motivated, and like so, so like blind by the thought of being able to do this without a problem. Yeah, I know what you mean, it's like, you felt like, the, you sometimes feel like the last one to like, accept the truth or something. Yeah, that's that's exactly what happened. Like, I might have seen it in people's faces. Like, they were like, whoa. <laughs> and I just, I didn't, I didn't account for it. I was just like, this is what I'd love to do. I'm just going to do it. Like, What's it like being a trans skater out there in the world now? You know, it looks to me sometimes, like, from the internet and things that I see that um, it's getting better. You know, there's brands devoted to it. There's um, a lot more coverage in magazines supporting the LGBT community. Like, I feel like there's two worlds to that now. There's like the online world of being a trans skater, and then there's the real world of being a trans skater. Um, as far as online, I don't, I don't do too much online. Um, I think my biggest endeavor was trying to do daily vlogs on YouTube. Uh, where I sort of came out as a trans skater and I had a lot of support from like people all over the place. So that was very nice. Um, as far as being a real life trans skater, <laughs> um, I think it would, I think it's what it, I think it's what females deal with, really. It's, it's just like a, I feel like people are shy to talk to me. Um, I don't know if it's coming from my skateboarding or from just who I am, but it's, it's very, it's, it's good, you know, maybe it's the city too, like people here are very, very welcoming. Um, I'd have to say like the last year of being out, I've probably had one negative experience, experience, which I'd turned into a positive, like I'd, I had a person say something to me. And then I just kind of turned that person into my friend in my head. And I was like doing tricks for them. <laughs> like I would be like, yo, this one's for you. <laughs> and 
and I would do something crazy, be like, yeah, high five, and he'd be like, stay away from me. <laughs> was it scary going out into the world, uh, um, you know, into the, the world of skateboarding um, once you decided, well, not, I mean, as, a, as you know, wearing women's clothes and, and, you know, being this person, being authentic, because it's so abnormal to not only the world, but especially skateboarding until very recently. It was a balance, you know, it was a balance between like being able to be authentic and and not having this like nervous breakdown <laughs> because it was literally like I would, <clears throat> again, I was just exploring to when it all kind of began. So it was like my style was still off of my like choice of clothing was still off. I've always been appropriate from what I could say, but it's it was different, you know, and what would happen is like, okay, I would go to a skate park and literally like pulling up to the skate park, I would start sweating, like just super nervous. And I'm like, shit, I don't know if I can do this. Like, I'm positive that I, I pulled up to the skate park and just drove away before, cause I just couldn't, I couldn't deal with it too many people. Um, but eventually when, when I started kind of developing myself and my confidence in it, it would still be like a nervous breakdown all the way up until like 10 minutes into skating. Like I had to skate the nerves away and, uh, and then it would just be great after that. I feel like I should have never been nervous cause, cause it's the skating, you know, like that's, that's what I'm there for. I'm not there to see anybody or to meet people. Like I'm, I'm there to skate and, and that's, that's really what it all became. You're now officially the first trans skater in America who attempted to qualify for the Olympics. Um, how does that feel? Did I attempt to qualify or did I oh, qualify? Good point. <laughs> um, so let me rephrase that then. Talk to us about the feeling of being the first. That didn't actually come to me until like a day ago. <laughs> Like, I, I didn't get any perspectives other than obviously my own, which was just this like sadness, disappointment, kind of stupidity sort of thing. <clears throat> and I was like, I think the past few days have been really just like a, me attempting to understand other people's perspective. Cause a lot of people have still been happy for me and very proud of what I've done. And and I just like, I, I thank them, you know, that that takes away a lot of my feelings is, is listening to how proud others are. And uh, that's, that's all I got really. It's like, I feel like I've done something for somebody else, even though I didn't know it. So I'm, I'm happy for that. I'm happy that I've done that. And, and I think that I've began something that I don't understand. And I'm just like, I'm, I'm kind of nervous and excited but I, I, I feel like I should be here. So this, this is it. It's just me trying to live through it and do my best with what I got and what's given to me. I remember I discovered skating when I was like 12 and I know why I loved it. And my answer now, 30 years later, is very different. Um, some of it's the same. But so, so I'm wondering, you've had this whole journey and you're a very different person now than when you discovered skateboarding. Like, Talk to me about what you love about skateboarding. It's been so long since I've been skateboarding, maybe 13, 15 years, that I've, I guess I've had the ability to kind of sum up everything that skateboarding has brought to me in any sense. The fact that when you're skateboarding, you're traveling a lot. You do a lot of things with your friends to go to other states to film and such. Like those were all opportunities and things presented to me from skateboarding, meeting people, um, girlfriends and boyfriends and all of that from skateboarding. Um, <clears throat> so that's one thing I've loved. Um, but specifically now, I love that skateboarding gives me a reason to do things. Like it's being that I'm older now, I can't skate like I used to in a sense where like, oh man, I used to, and really I'm thinking about my bails. Like I used to take some hard bails and I would get up and the next day it was the same thing. If I take a hard bail now, um, I, I calculate it. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna be out for three days. 
I gotta make sure I ice this thing. I, I'm heat packing it. <laughs> I'm like, I'm doing everything. But uh, skateboarding gives me a reason to, to be healthy right now. So I eat healthy because I wanna try to skate as, as long as I could. Gives me something to put my mind on, like set some sort of ambition or goal towards. I could track my progress. When I was a kid, it wasn't about that. It was just go out all the time and be free. But now it's like, Oh, I could do this. Oh, I didn't know I could do that. I could try this. And it's like exploring the different things, the different styles. And that's, that's really become fun to me, I guess, is tracking what I can and can't do and trying to do things I can't do. And then noticing that I learned or got better at something, like all that excites me now. Has there been any like physical noticeable changes in your skateboarding as a result of taking the hormones? Has it changed anything as far as strength or endurance or I, I, I don't want to sound ignorant I just no I'm just no curious. it's a great question so that's that's actually why I'm I'm even talking about tracking is because that was one of my fears in beginning hormones is my ability to skate might be hindered um, so as far as I could tell it hasn't affected me if it's done anything it's maybe my stamina have you found the skateboarding community overall to be supportive and accepting Honestly, I think I've made more friends with roller skaters than I have with skateboarders. And it's not like, again, skateboarders have been very welcoming for the most part. They're just kind of like shy as a whole. But um, a lot of the ladies in the roller skating community, they're just so groovy and they're so friendly around here. Like I've made friends with so many of them. We were talking about this earlier and you gave me permission to ask. Um, so are you attracted to men? Are you attracted to women? Like what is your sexual sort of orientation? I had a male idol, absolutely, like forever. <laughs> but I never thought of it as like a reason for me to be anything other than whatever, you know, it was casual. Uh, but it was Brad Pitt. <laughs> I'm with you on that, dude. Yeah. What's your favorite Brad Pitt? Like when is he the hottest? Uh, probably, probably Fight Club, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, nice. Tyler Durden. Tyler Durden, obviously, like his, his hip flexors, everything about him, he's, he's a monument. My first kind of like interaction as far as like romantically was actually with a fuck. Oh my God, I'm <laughs> Oh fuck, oh shit, I'm sorry. <laughs> Let me start that over. <laughs> no, go ahead. <laughs> oh my God, I can't believe I'm gonna tell you this dude and you're gonna <laughs> Oh, fuck. Okay. <clears throat> so my, my first kind of like romantic interaction thing was when I was a, a boy and it was with another boy. He was a male boy. And uh, we kind of just like, we, we messed around, you know, just kind of got familiar and such. <laughs> and um, I always, I always kind of like, I didn't really think about it. You know, it just kind of like happened. And then I did the same thing with a female later. And it was like, I, I stuck with females just because I knew it was society's norm. Um, so I didn't really get to explore that side of like whether I like men and women. It was just like, I've, I was free with it. Like I was very open to, to my sexuality. Like if you looked handsome today, you looked handsome today. And I would love to tell you that, you know? And <clears throat> if there was a handsome man in the street, there was a handsome man in the street. And I'd love to tell him that too, you know? And it was like, it was never a thing of whether I was sexually attracted to anybody or not. It was like, I was welcome to everything that came to me. And really the only thing that kind of presented itself to me was females and um, any males that tried to make advancements on me, I saw it as fun. It was always fun to me to, I mean, gay people are so nice. They always are. Like I've never had a bad interaction with the LGBT community. So um, yeah, it wasn't until recently that I discovered that I, I do love men too in that area. So. Um, <clears throat> but then again, like we're, we're talking about gender as a whole, like there's so many identifying genders that there's not even, it's not just man or woman anymore. So at this point I could say that I just, I love humans, but in the simplest form, I'm probably bi. I, 
I like men and women, but I just love people. Like people are people and everyone's beautiful. <laughs> That's awesome. And don't feel weird because I had a boy exploration experience when I was probably nine too. Like <laughs> ev whatever you just described when we first started of like, hmm. but, it, yeah. but again, it was like, did it with a friend. We we're like nine years old. Like, Oh, what's that? What's that? Have you told the anyone same thing? that, though? I'm telling the fucking world. Right I just now. told the world, and I've <laughs> never told anyone that, though. Like, that's no, so... I think there's probably people in my life who know that. There's this curiosity and this exploration, and then you forget about it, and you become, you grow up, and you become an adult. Like, yeah. you know, you mentioned um, that skateboarding is like free therapy, and um, I just was wondering if you could like expand on that a little bit. I think that's it's simple. It's it's a flow. Right, like that's something I'm familiar with is like the things that make you feel good is something that you can get into a flow, whether it's drawing, music making, dancing, or such and such. Mine was skateboarding. It was, uh, I mean, it was an opportunity for me to be free. So that, that was the first thing was just being able to, to dodge whatever situation I'm in and just go skate. Do you go to actual therapy? <laughs> I do. Is it helpful? Do you find it helpful? Yeah, especially lately. Um, I think at first it was like, what am I doing? Because <laughs> I, I just, I, I'm sure a lot of people don't, but I, I don't like talking to people about my feelings and such. Like I, I feel like I'm complaining and I don't want to complain. And the therapist like will literally sit there and take it. <laughs> so, well, that's why you're paying. And then she'll say something good or she or he will say something good. And it's like, whoa. Wow, thank you for listening. <laughs> so yeah. I always say it's like a free massage. Like it's like a massage for your heart or your brain, oh, yeah. you know, as opposed to for your shoulders or your back, you know. Love that. And I walk out feeling great every week, so. Yeah. I think everyone should have to go to therapy. Like yeah. mandatory. You know, I really appreciate those people. Well, they don't judge. They listen. And they're educated. And yeah, and they're so. not um, biased in any way. It's objective. But I think you'll find as you go further into therapy, you're gonna like it a lot more. The beginning's the hard part. Yeah, no, I'm starting to like it a lot, yeah. I just wanna know how you're feeling right now after this little, I guess, escapade of <laughs> skateboarding and Olympics and, and, and what, what's next for you, I guess. The first step is finding out what I can do to help make a change in that. Because at this point, it's like, I'm not gonna be able to participate but what about our kids? You know, like, I'm not gonna say that my kids are gonna come out as transgender, but obviously it's our children going into the future and they'll be the ones affected by this. Um, so kind of just like making a change for them at that point, as far as like skateboarding and Olympics. Besides that, I just kind of plan on continuing doing what I've been doing. Thank you. That was really awesome and fun. <laughs> Is that really it? <laughs> you want to keep going? No, yeah, let's go. No, you don't want me to get deep, go deeper than that. Do you? Oh my god, dude! <laughs> I'm not Brad Pitt, but oh, you can hug me. Awesome. <laughs>